Cool, so this is Dan Rock. Uh, when we originally planned this factory, we were going to build phase one in sort of the first year. And we were ex going to expand this factory times five. So the idea was to build this factory and duplicate it to increase capacity. What's then happened is in the meantime, the thought logic has changed a bit. And the idea is that this factory will be focusing on de-husking and the factories next to it will be doing drying and storage and sizing. So over here we've got two hoppers. Um, both of them are 16 ton hoppers. We call these the dirty nut and husk hoppers. Um, they then go through a cleaning station where we remove rocks, sticks and dust. And then they enter the drying room where we go into the clean nut and husk hoppers which are also two 16-ton hoppers. What we also have outside is a crusher for the nut and hu for the husk, actually, that comes out of the de-husking process. We've got a forward reverse belt, so they can park one trailer on the outside and one trailer on the inside, so that there is uh, less change over time between the two trailers. Danrock are aiming to de-husk eight tons an hour, so that would mean one trailer fills up every two hours. If you lost 15 minutes for every trailer swap, you'd be losing about two hours a day just swapping trailers. Hence, we went for the forward reverse option so that trailer swaps are, uh, say, fluent. They, we, we don't waste any time. Cool. Let's head to the rock sorter. So, You'll see a combination of old equipment and new equipment. Old equipment being belts that were bent and welded. Newer equipment that were bent and painted but modular. And then the newest that we just installed would be bent but also powder coated. So that would be an old belt. If you follow me over here. What we used to do with our old equipment was we would weld all these panels together, paint them, and then try to make them modular by bolting them together. But pieces like that head pulley over there is not modular. So if you wanted to increase this conveyor belt, you'd have to cut the head pulley off and move it further. With our new conveyors, like these over here, we have modular sections. So from there to there, is one module and then we've got a head piece which bolts loose so if you want to extend this conveyor belt you bolt the head piece loose add a part in and extend it go to the rock sorting table with this rock sorting area the idea was that we'd have dirty nut and husk entering dust and leaves would get blown out onto the dirty conveyor small rocks and uh, dirt would fall through these, roller, these rollers. All the dirt ends up going into one conveyor out through the crusher into the husk pile. So all of the husk from the de-husking process comes out one large flat valve up the incline into a crusher. So this is Dan Rock's de-husking area. In this area we've got two clean nut and husk hoppers, also 16 ton. Those hoppers feed into rubber de-huskers. We have a bank of six of them which each do 500 kgs of nut and shell per hour. Next to that we've got two conventional de-huskers with pneumatics on them. All the product of nut and shell and husk feed into a husk blower which removes husk and lets some of the nuts with extra husk go through. This thing goes into a reverse belt where round product rolls downwards, husk and flat product rolls upwards. The product that comes off the reverse belt goes into a tumbler and the tumbler's purpose is to remove small pieces of husk that have remained as well as nuts smaller than 16 mils. The good nuts pass onto two sorting tables where we do another visual sort to make sure that nothing has passed through that shouldn't have. The reworks pass back to the two clean nut and husk hoppers which then goes back through the dehuskers to get dehusked again and the bad nuts go into a 400 kg bin 
which will then be disposed of later through the crusher. The good nuts that come off of the two sorting tables will then go into a water bath where we remove floaters which could be immature nuts or insect damaged nuts. Good quality nuts sink to the bottom of the water bath and then go through a flash dryer which removes most of the excess water. These nuts then go into an inclined conveyor into the drying room. Everything in the de-asking area is controlled by a PLC. You press a start button and everything starts up in sequence. Uh, should something trip, the equipment will stop everything in sequence to ensure that there's no spillage, nothing gets damaged by overloading any conveyor machine or system. The nuts then go into a drying room which has eight four-ton bins and 16 eight-ton bins. So that's a total of 160 tons of dry nut and shell. This room has two extraction fans for redundancy, one that does the work and one that's a backup. We also have redundant controls in terms of automation uh, where we put two sensors in the drying room, one that does the job and one that's a policeman and the redundancy as a backup. Should one of the sensors fail, the system goes into a fail-safe mode where the extraction fans turn on permanently, the heaters are disabled and the system then goes into a safe mode where nuts cannot get damaged. The system also has a purge louver which is there to remove hot air from the room should the room overheat because of the four air conditioners that come from the cool store. We've put the compressor sides in the drying room to throw away the heat into the drying room which then means we use less electricity heating up the room because we are using the throwaway heat from the cool store. So this area over here is the final sorting area. After they've dried them in the drying room, they go through final sorting, which is a very slow, very accurate sort. Um, we're busy installing a multi-scan optical sorter here to reduce the labor and to increase the throughput. This incline belt will go into the optical sorter. Good nuts will go over the sorting tables again as a double sort up through a sizer and then it gets split into two different sizes, smalls and mediums, larges. Um, the client can choose whether he wants to separate large from medium and small or small from medium and large. So the size of the three sizes, but you've only got two conveyor belts going into the drying room. So in this area of here, the client decided they wanted to do a centralized control room system with cables running underground overhead but we realized that putting panels closer to where they need to be was a better decision. Everything is where it is, so we're making it work. Um, what we've done is we've got a touch screen over here that's linked to a central control system. Should the central control system bomb out, you can come and control the factory from here. Inside we've got your PLC that does all the controls. This component over here is called a Contactron. A normal contactor, if there was a loose connection in field, um, would not trip. You would not know that there's a loose connection. So the possibility of a motor burning out or process stopping without you knowing what the cause was is quite high. So we install contact drums on the bin fans only. Because if a conveyor belt stops, everyone in the factory knows it stopped. There's nuts everywhere, people start running around. But if a bin fan stops, you won't know it until the nuts go moldy. So we install these contact runs, very similar price to a contactor, and they'll be able to tell you if there's a loose connection, a bearing that's starting to fail. Um, so it gives us preemptive control. The other thing that the contact runs do is if the isolator is off in the field, then um, then the contact tron will tell you that the motor is not drawing any amps. So if your cleaners, for instance, forget to turn the motor back on, this will tell you the fans aren't running. So this little piece of equipment here is your insurance to make sure that your, your bin fans are on when they should be on. So this is a cool store, not to be mistaken with a cold store. A cold store will be running at about 10 degrees. The cool store in the drying, in the, in the macadamia area, runs at about 22 degrees. 
What we've got here is four standard air conditioners. Uh, we use standard air conditioners because if they break, you can call any normal aircon technician and they'll be able to come and fix them for you. We opt for standard equipment so we don't have specialized technicians that have to come and fix equipment for you and then leave you sort of dead in the water in their break. So how this room works is hot air enters the top of the air conditioners, cold air comes off of them, gets blown through this ducting into the cool store. We then measure the temperature and humidity of the air coming back to the system. If that is too hot or too humid, we tell the aircon to turn on. Last little piece of equipment we have in here is a humidifier. Now and then you could have the potential of this room becoming too dry, which then would cause the nuts to overdry. So in South Africa we want the nuts to be dried out to about 8%, not further than that. Um, in winter conditions, the room could be too dry. This humidifier turns on, wets the air slightly. By slightly, I mean it, it throws in a teaspoon of water every hour. Very, very slightly, just to bring the humidity back up to acceptable levels. So what we have over here is the sizer in the final sorting area. Brings two sizes of nuts into the cool storage area. Stays split. This is a split conveyor belt. So you can say bin number one gets small nuts and bin number two gets medium and large nuts. The purpose of this room is long-term nut in shell storage without further drying. So the air conditioners that you saw here in the previous shot, those are very, very slow acting air conditioners. It's not a system that cools this room down to 22 degrees within five minutes. Nuts enter here, they can stay in here for two to three months safely without picking up mold or any further damage. Um, it's a very passive system, so the temperature fluctuates a little bit up, a little bit down, the humidity fluctuates up and down, but versus ambient temperature outside, which fluctuates between 10 degrees in the evening and 30 degrees in the day, this room is constant. So that's, that's what this room does. It also serves as a buffer zone if the processors can't accept nuts. So if the processors are full, you've got an area where you can store nuts, um, like I say, for up to two to three months. These bins are standard drying bins. They've got positions cut out for fans in future, but we haven't installed them yet because when hot nuts enter this room, enter, enter a bin, the heat causes convection to take place. So the cold air enters the bottom of the bin, the hot air leaves the top. That ducting then cools down the hot air again and it recycles like that. So in future, this room can become a drying room and that's why we've left space for, for bin fans. The size of this duct is also big enough for the uh, bin fans to have sufficient airflow in future. Uh, once these nuts are dry, they then get fed out on the outfeed conveyors onto an 800 millimeter wide belt that's split in two, then goes out to the truck. These belts will empty an eight ton bin in about 20 to 30 minutes. So you can empty two bins at once out of two conveyors split, split into a truck, which is also split. So you've got two separate bins in one truck at once. Uh, 16 tons per 20 to 30 minutes. So with our conveyor belt, we have put a lot of time and effort into getting all the finer details sorted out. So we've made our conveyor belts modular in that from there to there is one module. That then bolts onto a drive pulley that is separate from the bodies. So if you wanted to extend this conveyor belt in future or shorten it, or make it larger, we could actually take this whole conveyor belt back, repurpose it for someone else because it is a modular belt. Things like the idler rollers are adjustable. So on long belts, you can actually adjust the return of the belt to track it straight. Uh, our heads and tail pulleys are all crowned, which ensures that the belt runs straight as well. Little things like on the tail pulley, we've got notches so that when you set the belt up, 
It doesn't take you half an hour to line it up. It takes you about five minutes. All these little details are things that we've sorted out over the last three years, improved on, and this is now our Susteco conveyor belt. So over there, we've got a fresh air inlet. So all the fresh air that we use to dry the nuts come down this corridor into that inlet. It runs a gauntlet of the ceiling, gets heated up to about 60 to 70 degrees. Then it goes into the drying room and we use that hot air to dry the nuts.